Now, let's talk about actually our shelving. This is going to be our bottom of our bookcase. Or wait a second, is it going to be the bottom or is it going to be the top? Does it matter? Yes, it does. Because our shelves now, now I could put them in just like this. I could slide our shelves in and then do exactly what I did here and screw it into place and take my measuring tape out and measure and be like, okay, well, that's exactly where I want this. And then I'll put the little, I'll mark it on the side with my pencil. But invariably, when I drill that screw, if I'm not clamping this right, it's going to tweak or this might be out of square over there. So you've got extra material. So what I do is I cut scrap pieces just to length. So what I'll do is I'll put them right in here. Look spacer lower shelf that's for the shelves down here this would be the space for the upper shelves now the one thing that you want to make sure is that if I'm gonna drive screws I don't want to drive it away from my spacer I want to drive it towards so this is gonna be my upper shelf spacer upper I drop it right in place I flip my shelf over now that it's falling off the bookcase here get back here there I take it and I make sure, I'll flip it this way so you can see it, that these pocket holes go to the front for our face frame because this is our back. I should say they go down because that the face is facing down. Just like that. Now my spacer is in here. I run my screws in over here. That locks that into place. I take this exact spacer. I put it on that side and I do the same thing. Now. The way I built this one is these spacers could be, they're a little bit off. I like the, the top one to be a little bit larger, but you can make that spacer whatever works for you. I have a spacer for the lower one. Now, the lower ones are exactly the same. Boom. Once that's done, I put the spacer in there. I put the next shelf and the next shelf and the next shelf, and that could be as tall as your bookcase goes. So, very simple. Um, I'm going to lock that into place, and I'm going to start screwing these in. Doo -doo -doo. This is the fun part. Remember, if you used a table saw and you set your fence to 34 and a half and what have you, if you set, and here's the moment of truth, this and this exactly the same, what's going to happen is it's going to be tight. Don't misunderstand me because you're coming at a little bit of an angle. But when this drops in, it's going to square up your bookcase. So as of right now, if it's not perfectly square, when I force this in, and I might have to force it a little bit because it is tight, when I force it in, it's going to square up the entire bookcase. That means that the top will be flush. Right now it's not, so that means it's racked a little bit. But when I force it in, it actually will square it up perfectly. Knock that in place. Make sure that's perfectly flush. Now, I'll run one screw in there. Now I can put my stuff back up top. One screw in there. Now I come over here, make sure I'm flush up here. Now I'll just pop that in like that. Now I'll run a screw in here. Push it, to make sure you're flat and, you know, it's flush. Run that in. Again, the screw, the angle of the screw is going to draw this not only into here, but it's going to draw it down in nice and tight. So we'll come down here. And now I can run all the rest of the screws. And I will guarantee you, guarantee, like a 100% lifetime guarantee, that if you cut everything accordingly, that you're not going to have to square up your bookcase. And you're going to get a nice, perfectly square bookcase in the end. All right, so now we're on to the face frame to cover up our, you know, our plywood edges. Don't look so pretty. So we're, again, we're using the pine. Now, how we mark for that is very simple. We just take a pencil and we mark where our shelves are. But one thing uh, to talk about is again, these are one by twos. I didn't have to cut these at all. This base piece right here is a one by eight, and that's simply going to uh, screw into the face frame like there. So I didn't have to cut that. But what I did do 
was I ripped uh, one of our one by material down to two, two and three quarter of inches for the top. Again, it's a little bit wider uh, because remember we have a crown molding that goes around there. And it, what it does is that once the crown molding's up there, it's going to give an inch and a half reveal, which is the width of these. So it kind of sort of makes sense when it's all together. But uh, at this point, I'm just going to take my face frames. I'm going to take all my pine and get it out of the way. I'm going to literally hold my face frame right here with my finger, flush it up, make sure it's sort of, uh, you know, roughly flat on this side. I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to mark about an eighth inch above where this shelf is and I'm going to put a little X because that's where I want my face frame to go across just like that. If you try to make it perfectly flush with this, I just find that it's, I don't know, for whatever reasons, I like it a little bit up, like an eighth or a sixteenth. It stops books from sliding out. It just makes a little bit more sense in the long run. So I, I put my little mark. I make my X. Make my X. I flip it up like this. Now I take my other piece. I put it right next to each other. I hold them flush on this end. And then I just make that mark here. I use my little device like this. Mark it across. That way I know exactly down the line that this is going to be exactly where they go in the face frame. And then that, because the carcass is square, the face frames are square, everything is going to go together well. I'm actually going to take pocket holes and put them in our rails and then attach the whole thing together. So now that I've got that marked, I'm going to scoot these out of the way, take off our bookcase so far, and then uh, start putting together our face frame. Now, I'll put this here a little maneuvering and we're going to actually throw this back up on the bench. Now, this is a very sturdy bookcase <sighs> made out of all three quarter. Believe me, you'll, uh, you'll be happy later when you lug it around and it stays together for you. Now, all we're going to do is same thing that we secured our face frames with pocket screws. We're just going to use the pocket screws that we drilled in the sides and in the shelves to attach this, this to the face frame. And then it's on to the molding, which is the fun part. Well, actually, everything's fun if you think about it. Okay, so we got the glue on there. We plop this on top. Now, the one thing that I made very, very uh, important when you're building this is that when you make these length rails, you want them a little bit longer so you get a little bit of an overhang so that way I can come back and, and trim it with like a laminate trimmer or a flush trim bit that you'll see me do in a couple of minutes. But that way it's a little bit over flush if you, or a little bit over, it's, I'll try to make my mouth say what my head is thinking. It is actually proud of this piece of wood there. So that way we can come back and trim it so it's flush. If I try to make it flush, exactly throughout the whole thing. It's just going to be more difficult. It's not worth going through that aggravation. So I make it a little bit proud all the way through and then I'm just going to screw it all together and then we can do that flush trim thingy and hopefully I'll get my vocabulary back. Here's to hoping. Alright, so now it's time to flush trim our side. Now you could leave it with that little bit of a lip, um, but when you try to wrap the base and the crown, it's going to give you all sorts of problems. So what I use is simply this bit with a router. This is a flush trim bit. The bearing's on the bottom and the cutter is on the top. So when I flip it this way, I turn it on and I push it against. This bearing will run right up against the, this plywood and then cut it flush. It's a nice way to ensure that you have a nice flush outside. Um, you can do a little bit of sanding, but for the most part, this will take care of a good majority of the work. If you want to use a belt sander or something like that, you could. You just would be here all day long. So, route right away, I say. Anytime you're using a router, make sure you're smart and you're working safe. Two hands on the router at all times and make sure that the router base is flat on the surface that you're routing. Okay, so now we're on to the top. And again, if we leave the plywood like that, 
you see the plywood edge, not good. So what we're going to do is edge band it again just by simply attaching that like that. And how do we do that is another wonderful technique. It's just pocket holes. If this is going to be our top, which we've specified, we're just going to take and we're going to drill pocket holes across the front like that. And then that way we'll do the same thing that we've done in the past, clamp that, attach that. But the one thing that we will want to do is we want to miter these corners. So if you got yourself a miter saw, this is where I mean, you could use it, do it by hand, but the miter saw for this one's going to be a, a good a good thing to have. And how we actually make those miters, I'll tell you now real quick before we get into it. So I just take my piece, again no measuring tape, I take my pencil, I mark here, I mark there, I mark where the miter's going so I don't mess up, and then I just take it over and cut it on the miter saw. So simply the front, the two sides, and then I pocket hole it all together. Okay, so here is our plywood top edge banded with our pine and this is what it looks like from underneath and that is what it looks like on top which is going to be the top to our bookcase. Nice thing is, is again our pocket holes are going to be hidden um, because they're going to be underneath so this is going to sit flush to the back we'll center it up accordingly and then we're going to take our uh, small crown molding or a bed molding and then apply that right up underneath like so. So real quick, I'm going to throw some glue on this, nail this in, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about the crown molding. So, Now I nailed the top in place, but you could just as easily have used your Craig screws. 